So, as some people have mentioned, um, my shirt kind of takes shots at France. Um, specifically, the fact that uh, U.S. kicked their butt in an, a wine-tasting competition back in 1976. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. But, you know what? That doesn't stop me from enjoying it from time to time, so stay tuned while we look at this white Bordeaux. Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Dime, and today, well, I'm going to be reviewing this wine, and I normally just rattle off the name, but I suck at French, and I'm going to need the help, so I'm going to actually read the label. Uh, this is the 2016 Chateau Tour de Bonnet uh, from uh, Bordeaux, specifically uh, Entrée de Mur. I probably just butchered that. Mers? Entrée de Mer? Du Mers? Entrée du Mers? I'll just, I'll just keep doing this until I get it right or not, and just give up and move on to the next part. Specifically, 50% uh, uh, Sauve Blanc, 40% uh, Simeon, and 10% Muscadel. It is 12.5% alcohol by volume, and I paid $14 for it at Total Wines. So first of all, screw top, plus one. And let's take a look at this. All right, so from a color standpoint, well, I'd say you're Leaning towards pale lemon. Pale lemon, no artifacts, no cloudiness. Actually, no, correct that. You are a pale lemon green. No artifacts, no cloudiness. There's, now I'm looking at you, there is a definitive green note. Pale lemon green, no artifacts, no cloudiness. From a nose standpoint, whoo, whoo, I, I always forget how much fun you can have with a good blend. So this, <laughs> this, is, this is gonna be a cool wine. So first thing I'm getting is like a funky grass with a little bit of pear, jasmine note, like as in the flower, yes, jasmine flower, uh, a sour grape, a little bit of green apple. I said funky grass already, right? I said funky grass. All right, a little bit of orange peel. It's gonna sound weird, it smells, it's, it's very minerally. It, it, it smells like it just has a lot of minerality coming out of it. It, it smells like whetstone. All right, so now let's get to the taste. Okay, interesting. All right, let's see how this plays. Let's see how this plays. All right, so you got a medium finish. All right, so this this wine actually has some very interesting characteristics to it compared to if you just ordered a Sauvignon Blanc or a Semillon or something like that. Um, there is there is some difference whenever you blend all these things together. Um, so first of all, let's talk about a little bit, before I go too much into this, let's talk about what what those grapes blended together do for the wine. So uh, the Sauvignon Blanc is a very highly aromatic grape. So it's gonna add a lot of primary fruit aromatics to it. It's also gonna provide some acid. Uh, the Semillon is gonna provide the backbone of the wine in terms of the body, because it has a little bit higher residual sugar. Um, it also will add some sort of like floral notes, like honeysuckle and or honey, if the wine is actually aged some. Uh, and then on the note for the muscadel, the muscadel is a very grapey, well, grape. It's not a muscat, but it has some very similar qualities to it. But a muscadel is the minor amount because it's trying to, it's just trying to provide a little more aromatics and complexity into, into this wine. So, with that being said, now that you understand why they blended these grapes together, let's actually talk about this wine. So, from a body standpoint, You're a, you, you're a easily medium body wine. Like this is an easy pick. There's no medium minus you, you are a, a medium body wine. Uh, medium alcohol, medium finish, as I had already mentioned, medium acid, slightly, uh, there's a slight salinity to it. The things I'm getting the most in terms of uh, primary fruit, uh, I'm getting a little bit of green apple. I'm getting a lot of pear. I am getting a slight grape note. Uh, it, it's like a red grape. Almost, it's, it's a little bit more or sweeter. I, I would say this wine is off dry. It's very smooth, just a very, very smooth mouth textured wine. I'm also getting that, that wet stone I was telling you about. There's that nice grassiness that pops in. That grassiness probably is from the soft block. Uh, it's probably the wet stone as well. Or that could be the muscadel, maybe. I'd lean towards soft block. Uh, but this is, this is a very smooth, just easy drinking wine. As you can tell, I've just drank my sample pretty much. So, let's get to the Blick criteria. For balance, you're in balance. You, you're, you're really well in balance. You get a point there. Length, 
medium length, half a point. Intensity, I'm gonna give you medium intensity. You do have intensity and you have equal intensity across the board. It's just not like popping in and out. It's not all over the place. But that's gonna be okay and I'll get to that in a second. Complexity standpoint, I am getting these nice minerality notes. I'm getting these like grassy notes. I'm getting this primary fruit and I'm getting some like citrusy notes. I'm getting green notes. You do have lots of complexity. I don't have any aging though. Uh, so I'm not getting a honey notes or anything like that. So I'm gonna give you half a point. All right, so that comes out to two and a half points. Uh, whew, this is gonna be a tough one. I'm gonna give you very good on this one. And the reason why is that intensity. And I had mentioned that you only got half a point for intensity. If you had a full point for intensity, this would be an easy, very good, no questions asked. The reason why I'm giving you a very good instead of just a good is because of that intensity. And as I had mentioned, the intensity is, well, I mean, it's it's not stellar. It's not out of the, blowing me out of my shoes over here, and but it's also not, not present? I'm trying to figure out how to say this. I'm, I'm, I'm having horrible speech day today, but, what it does do is it does lend itself to do what a lot of old school wines do very well, which is be paired with food and not overpower the dish. So there's some new world wines that do that pretty well. Um, right now I'm specifically thinking of like Zinfandel and barbecue, uh, things like that. But one of the things I like about French and Italian wines is they're made to kind of pair with the food in the area exceptionally well. So a lot of Italian wines are, are made in that region's style because they pair well with that food in the region. And a lot of French wines are like that too. So for example, I'm going to have a seafood soup tonight. And I think this wine is going to be an amazing companion with it because it's gonna play very well with it and not try to overpower it. And one of the things you wanna make sure you're always doing when you're doing your food pairings is a like for like pairing. You want, don't want the wine to be overpowering because then at that point it's taken away from the food and you want the food to kind of match it so that way the wine doesn't become an afterthought. You want these things to play well together and as we all know, playing well together is the secret to success. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you tried, I'm gonna have to look at the bottle again, the Chateau Tour de Bonnet. I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. In the meantime, uh, well, I have to go down and start cooking, and uh, you know what? <laughs> I might sip on a little of this wine while I'm doing it. Hopefully there's some left for the main dish. Can't guarantee it. Maybe. We'll find out. Okay, I'll see y'all later. Bye.